the working of CRO with the help of block diagram. So this figure shows the block diagram of CRO cathode ray oscilloscope. Now let us see the working of CRO with the help of this block diagram. So remember there are two channels. This channel is called as the vertical channel and this channel is called as the horizontal channel. So we see the working channel wise. So the input voltage which we want to measure or usually the unknown voltage which we want to measure is always applied to Y input of the CR. Then this voltage is very small voltage or the amplitude of this voltage is very small. So this amplitude is increased by using a vertical amplifier. So the input signal, unknown signal which is connected to the Y input of the CRO goes to the vertical amplifier section. This vertical amplifier section will increase or decrease the amplitude of the input signal. And this is possible with the help of front panel control marked holes per division or on the front panel of the CRO one button is provided and it is marked as holes per division. So by rotating this button we can either increase the amplitude of the input signal or we can decrease the amplitude of input signal. Then this amplified input signal goes to the delay line. So what is the use of this delay line? So this delay line will provide a time delay so that the trigger circuit voltage has a chance to reach the horizontal deflecting plates. Why this is called as the vertical amplifier? Because the output of this vertical amplifier is applied to the vertical deflecting plates. See here, these are vertical deflecting plates and these are, and these are horizontal deflecting plates. Therefore, this is called as vertical amplifier because the output of this vertical amplifier goes to the vertical deflecting plates through delay line. So delay line will provide, so the delay line will provide the time delay between the vertical signal to reach the vertical deflecting plates. This is necessary for the synchronization of the unknown voltage applied to the vertical plates and the voltage time based voltage appearing on the horizontal deflecting plates. Now the sample of the vertical signal is given to the trigger circuit. Now what this trigger circuit will do? The trigger circuit will provide a small trigger pulse to the time based generator. And this time based generator is designed by using a UZT sawtooth oscillator. This time based generator will generate a voltage shown in this diagram. So initially the voltage across capacitor go on increasing. It reaches to the maximum. So this time is called as the forward stroke or this is a charging, charging time of the capacitor. When the capacitor charges to the full value, it suddenly discharges. This is called as the flyback time of the time wave generator. And the time, total time required for this forward stroke and flyback is called as the sweep time. Or this represents the sweep periodic time. From that you can find out what is the sawtooth frequency. So this sawtooth of waveform is generated by using a time based generator circuit and this is designed by using UZT relaxation oscillator. And uh, one control is provided here that is usually called as time per division. A button is provided on the front panel of the CRO which is used to adjust this time periodic time. And this is provided in three scales, second, millisecond and microsecond. So three readings are provided on this calibrated knob which is provided on the front panel of the 
CRO and this time wave generator will produce a sawtooth wave form. Then this goes to the horizontal amplifier. The amplitude of this sawtooth voltage is increased by using a horizontal amplifier and then it is applied to the horizontal deflecting plates. Now what is the use of this sweep voltage? So when the voltage increases from 0 to maximum value, what will happen? The electron spot will start on the screen on the left. So you start on the left and as the voltage go on increasing, see this is the voltage applied between horizontal deflecting plates. Therefore the electron spot will be deflected along the x-axis. As voltage increases, the deflection of the spot on the screen also go on increasing. When it reaches at the end of the screen, the voltage suddenly becomes zero and therefore again the spot, electron spot comes back to the left hand side. Again the next cycle begins. So that again spot start deflecting towards right, it reaches to the right end of the screen. And when the voltage again suddenly falls to zero, it again comes back. Means this sawtooth voltage will try to move the electron spot from left to right on the screen. So this is the main function of this sawtooth voltage. Then, so I have explained to you cathode ray tube, vertical amplifier, the line, trigger circuit which produces sawtooth waveform. Trigger circuit provides a small pulse to time based generator and then time based generator start producing the sawtooth waveform. Then this is applied to the horizontal amplifier and then it goes to the horizontal deflecting plates. Again one more requirement that is power supply. For working of all these that is vertical amplifier, delay line, trigger circuit, time based generator, horizontal amplifier, we require a power supply. Power supply is of two types, high voltage power supply and low voltage power supply. So high voltage power supply is applied to the accelerating anode and low voltage power supply is given to all the electronic circuits used in this block diagram. So this is the working of cathode ray oscilloscope using the block diagram. Now here we see that the unknown signal which we want to measure is given to the vertical deflecting plates through delay line. At the same time, we are applying sawtooth waveform between the horizontal deflecting plates. So this sawtooth voltage will try to move the electron spot from left to right on the screen. At the same time, the vertical signal applied between vertical deflecting plates will try to produce the deflection along y axis. So if there is a proper synchronization between the sawtooth voltage and the input signal given to the vertical deflecting plates and due to the property of the persistence of fusion on CRO there is a tracing of waveform on the CRT screen, we plot each and every point corresponding to different time intervals. And this is done frequently. And if this will happen within one tenth of the second, and due to the persistence of vision of the, our eye, we will be able to see a continuous waveform on the screen. So this is the idea usually in producing the signal waveforms on the CRT scheme that is basically the persistence of vision. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching.